Now this original Nest thermostat came out nine years ago and it was a contender for any of the smart thermostats out there. But with the introduction of this new fourth generation thermostat, things have changed quite a bit. Now, do these go head to head with each other or is one better than the other? The flagship might surprise you, but the newer one has a lot of surprises up its sleeve too. Let's dive right into it. So what has changed? Let's take a look at this one really quick to understand that. So starting with the second generation, it was truly a flagship when it was released in 2012. It had a premium stainless steel finish. You can see that thick bezel on the side and it was really solid. Even today it's build quality feels really high quality and high end. Now let's look at the fourth generation and see how that looks. Now with the fourth generation, you can see that that steel ring is gone, even though it looks steel, but it's actually plastic on the side. And it has a more sophisticated and sleek look, um, especially due to the fact that they've sort of upgraded the software on how everything looks. But it does look really nice from far away, even though it's not as premium as you would think the original flagship is. So this is the first case where the two thermostats differed. One has a premium stainless steel finish to it, whereas the other one not so really, a little bit more plastic. Now, is it all about looks or is it about features too? So with this new thermostat, let's take a look at the home screen really quick or where you're gonna change everything. So you can just click it right here. And what you can do is just slide your fingers on the side, you can change the temperature up and down, and you can see how smooth the transition is, right? And uh, the display looks really pleasing to the eyes too. Unlike this one, which is really bright when you see it, this one is not gonna blind you, even though this does have a lower resolution. But it doesn't seem like it, does it? It seems really premium. Um, so now that we're on the home screen, you can see you can adjust through the different uh, options that you have. You can go into settings or you can change the mode on it just like we did have with the older thermostat. You could press on it and you can go into a mode where you have both heat and cool or you can stick with cooling or stick with heating by itself too. Now if you want to exit out of the menu you just scroll down to the very bottom and it highlights the back and you just go ahead and press that. Now, if you wanna to go to the home screen again, press it. Now, let's take a look at the standby screens that we have because I think those are really interesting when you approach it. So let's go to the settings screen and I'm gonna go ahead and click it. And here is basically something called Farsight, which is basically when you approach it, the thermostat detect that you're standing there. With Farsight, I had the digital clock set on it so let's say, see all of these different looks and see what we have. Um, we have a analog clock, so I'm gonna set that and let's see how that looks on Farsight. This is the first standby mode. Um, this is the analog clock and you can see how it has the clock analog and here you can see you have the home temperature on the top, you have the humidity and the temperature outside. So it gives you three variations doesn't convey a lot of information. I mean, you can look at it at a glance and be like, oh, it's probably this time, but you really can't tell. But it does look nice. This is the default temperature display. Here on the top, you can see what the temperature is right now, and then what we're aiming for on the bottom. Uh, so I just have that set at 75 right now, but you can also see you get the indoor temperature, the humidity, and uh, you also get a little digital clock on the side. But unlike this one, where it would just show you what the temperature is and wouldn't give you a lot of information, uh, this gives you a lot of information at a glance. So yeah, the software has improved tremendously and I'm really loving that about this device. Now there you have the digital clock mode. This is probably one of my favorites. It gives you the time, the temperature and everything. And if you wanna go ahead and change the far sight, uh, you can see exactly what you have right here. Uh, so yeah, that digital clock one is probably one of my favorites. Let's look at the next one, which is the weather one. Let's see how that looks like. And this is what the weather standby mode looks like, gives you exactly what you need, the outside temperature, 
before going outside. And then it gives you the indoor temperatures too. So that's really useful too, to have both of those things interconnected. But overall, uh, you can see the quality, you can see the software. Uh, it's uh, changed quite a bit compared to the old thermostat. One difference is learning, right? The older generation sort of learned from your behaviors. The newer one sort of is an AI version that looks at the outdoor temperature and then also looks at your behavior too, but it's much more faster and adaptable uh, even though this one is still solid where it stands. Now, one huge thing about this new learning thermostat is it is integrated with matter, which basically means that one, it can connect to many different smart home devices. It doesn't have to be Google infrastructure. It can operate without internet. You heard me right. If you lose access or power to your Wi-Fi, it'll still work. And third, last but not least, it is future-proofing your home because the smart home protocol for the future is going to be matter smart home devices. And you'll see this everywhere in the next couple of years, whereas this older device doesn't have matter integrated into it. So if you're looking at both thermostats, you can see that the flagship thermostat, the second generation, the one that came out nine years ago, is still a solid build and it does get the job done. But if you're looking into future compatibility and you want an infrastructure that is going to be the foundation for many other smart home devices with matter compatibility, then this is the way to go. Otherwise, this in itself still holds its ground and still is a pretty solid investment to me. So in my opinion, whatever you can buy where the price is right, I would go with that option and the rest is up to you. One really does have good looks, whereas the other one is really premium and has a solid build. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe for more.